Hey everybody, this is Garrett with Earth and Time, and today I'm coming to you from Reno, Nevada, where I want to show you a pretty unique deposit. I'm right along what's known as the Truckee River, which you can see down below me as I'm walking along this road that's on a terrace just above the river. And so what I want to share with you all are a couple things. One is what some of the early deposits look like when the Basin Range was opening up. Basin Range extends from California all the way to Utah and covers all of Nevada, goes into Idaho, uh, even extends as far down as places in New Mexico and down into Mexico as well. But what I want to show you here is some unique deposits associated with that early opening. And really, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of these posits that we actually use every day or folks have used every day and don't really know about. So join me today. Let's talk about these unique deposits and how they relate to the opening up of the Basin Range. So let's get to it. So I've jumped down into this little dry drainage ditch because I want to show you these unique rocks that are right behind me. So these rocks actually record some of the early opening of the Basin Range, and they're right around 10 million years old when this portion of the Basin Range was starting to open up. And how do we know that? Well, if I turn the camera around and we look down at some of the rocks in this gully, we have a lot of volcanic rocks. And volcanic rocks are, are known to be datable and so what scientists have done is they've been able to date all the different volcanic rocks here and by doing that they get ages associated with them now the actual sediments that i see behind me it's much harder to get ages you can get fossils out of them and fossils you can start putting that story together about what the age of those fossils are because there's certain fossils and certain creatures that lived at different times so think of like the dinosaurs if we find a dinosaur we know we're in the mesozoic so volcanic rocks like we see down in this wash can be dated through a series of different methods and they're pretty reliable so what they found are a series of basalts or lava flows at the base of some of these deposits we're going to talk about and they were about 10 million years old or so so it gives us an idea that this was all deposited pretty much around that time a little bit younger in some places a little bit older in others so what is this deposit we're looking at? Well, I wanna point out a couple of things. One is you'll notice that they are tilted and we can see that they're tilted down to my left. So that's actually down towards the east. And we know with geologic units, generally they're deposited flat. So these would have been deposited flat. And these are actually a series of lake deposits and some old fluvial or, or stream deposits associated with these early basins that opened up on this, portion of the basin and range. And so this tells me something. This tells me that I know these are deposited flat, but they must have been rotated at some point. And there must have been something here to allow the deposition of lake deposits and river deposits as well, which means I must have had an old valley here. So the other thing I'll point out here is there's a number of fractures going through these old lacustrine deposits. As we talked about this idea of faulting, what's interesting is you have a smooth surface here where there's a little fault here and we call these slick in lines and so there's some slick in lines here where this rock has moved past itself due to faulting now what's interesting about this movement is in based in range usually the smooth surface goes up and down in this case it's going in and out or what we call a lateral or strike slip motion associated with this movement so that's a little different than what we'd expect in this area a bit so there are some strike slip faults here and this still could be related to normal faulting in fact if i just go from here and i pan up see how these beds are on their side so this is actually a feeder system of silica coming through right up a fault zone within the lake sediments in fact you can see the fault zone right through there and you can also see it because it's where everything's eroding out and as i pan up you can really see it up higher as well so I've walked up the little rise to get closer to these deposits. And what I really want to point out are a couple of things. One, the colors, they're very light colored. You can also see areas with both gravel, which are probably some shoreline gravels, and some really fine muds in here as well, as well as some of these more silicified units. And maybe these are ash beds 
that are coming through here. And I'm actually not positive, but they very well could be ash beds. So there's a lot of volcanism happening in this area as these basins were starting to open up and develop. The other things these deposits are famous for is they're actually a source of diatomite. So if anybody's ever heard of diatomite, and I think we have a little bit of diatomite here. So a lot of people talk about using diatomaceous soil. So di diatoms were these silica derived organisms. So basically the outsides of their, their, their bodies were silica and people use them for all kinds of things. And at the base of these cross beds, which by the way are fascinating, it tells me there was some kind of flow coming in the lake. There's actually a diatomaceous later, later here. So a lot of people use diatomaceous soil for their gardens to, uh, slugs are coming across or ants or other creatures, they'll use it. But actually here in the Reno area, they actually had large diatomaceous mines that were actually used for kitty litter. So cat litter originally was from, from diatomaceous soil, this 10 million year old diatomaceous soil to be exact here in the Reno area, at least for a lot of the Western United States, they would get their kitty litter would all be mined here. Pretty fascinating, right? And again, we can see that little thin layer of it, obviously not enough to mine here, but we're gonna make a quick stop and take a look at a spot where you're gonna see that it's a big cliff full of diatomite. And those are the kinds of deposits that they're mining for kitty litter. Before I head out and, and take you down to where they have that big section of diatomite, I do wanna point out a couple more things about this outcrop. One of the things about being a geologist is we're always like Sherlock Holmes, right? We're always trying to figure out the mystery of how it got deposited, when it got there, what created it. We know kind of the, the when, we've got those dates about 10 million years ago. We know the how, so there was a series of basins starting to form up due to faulting here. And these are old lake and fluvial uh, systems, lake and river systems that were deposited here. And we saw that nice example just above that diatomite of, of what we call cross beds coming down, which is pretty common fluvial indicator. And we have some nice examples like these where you can see the various gravels across here that were so the water was carrying these gravels and there's some other nice areas where it looks like maybe there's some shorelines in here and things stabilized for a little while and it looks like some stuff sloughed off and then there's our diatomite and our cross beds as i move up and then you can see that kind of continues all the way through i actually decided to move parallel along this road and one thing i want to point out is the the Lake deposits have gotten a lot more white, which tells me there's probably more silica in here as well as maybe more of this diatomaceous um, deposits in here. And this, so this may have been an area where they could have mined from as well. It's not as easy for me to get over to that area. But again, I want to point out, here's this lacustrine deposit. On top of that, you can actually see some gravels and erosion. So a stream probably came over on top at some point in a road at the top of that. And then you can continue to see kind of a muddy zone and then more gravels on top. And you'll see how they're all rotated and they're all rotated a fairly similar amount, which gives me an idea about the timing of the later faulting that rotated all this. So these were all rotated together as one pack. They started horizontal and then eventually ended up rotating to where we see them at today. All right, if anybody's interested in visiting this spot or visiting this area along the Truckee River, I'm just by Mayberry Park in Reno. So I'm on the west side of Reno. Now, the Truckee River connects Lake Tahoe up in the Sierra Nevada Mountains all the way down to Pyramid Lake out in the Nevada desert. So it's a phenomenal river, great for fishing, great for inner tubing when it's high enough, and just a fun place to come hang out if you ever come this way. And because it's helping sculpt through this area. It's a fascinating place to come see a lot of really cool geology. Okay, I've moved a couple miles or maybe a mile and a half away from Mayberry Park. And I wanna point out to you what I like to call kitty litter cliff. And this is a big stack of that diatomaceous soil or rock that was deposited in one of these lakes about 10 million years ago when the basin range was opening up. Now, what's really cool about it is you can see how wide it is. You can actually see some veining from fractures. So that's iron staining, probably associated with water moving through this because of the volcanic activity. Let's go walk across the street and see what this stuff looks like up close. Okay, so let's work our way over here now. You're, if you ever stop here, we are along a kind of busy road. 
So just be aware of that. But what I want to show you is get up close to some of what this diatomaceous material looks like. And I wish you could all feel this because it's really porous and you can break it real easily. So, and then you can take a closer look at its pore structure. So this is basically kitty litter or what would have been kitty litter at one point. I don't know if they're still mining it for that, but this is a diatomaceous lake deposit here in Nevada. Pretty cool. So if you ever have an earth science quiz or, or a trivia night and you ask what type of rock makes up early cat litter, now you can say Garrett from Earth and Time told me it was diatomaceous lake deposits or lacustrine deposits, basically a bunch of diatoms. And we actually went here and visited one of the sites. It really is a unique site here. I've never been able to see diatomaceous soil or deposits quite like this in this part of the country. So if I flip this around, you can see some volcanic rocks mixed in here with the diatomaceous rocks. And actually, if I look straight above me, you all can see there's a fault zone right here. So I'm actually standing along the fault zone. You can see how sheared and beaten up it is relative to the cliffs to the right or to the left. So still a very active place as far as faults go. Pretty interesting. Okay, with this amazing backdrop of, of what I like to call kitty litter cliffs here, I wanna say thank you all for joining me today. This is just a quick visit and thinking about some of the geology. And one of the things we do as geoscientists, we look at road cuts, we come walk along a stream, we come to some beautiful scenery in places like you can see here behind me, the, the Reno Valley. And we try to put together the geologic story. Now, there's a lot of folks who've put, done work here before me. Uh, there's folks at University of Nevada, Reno, and I'll post some of their work in the description below if you wanna learn more about these basins and these types of deposits and about this early story of the basin range in the Reno area. So with that being said, thank you all for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to keep up on all my adventures, I'm talking about geology and history across much of the United States and next year, hopefully even overseas. So with that being said, thank you all again. Take care and see you all in the next adventure.